sounds kind of weird, but good evening. I'm not used to saying good evening. I'm used to saying good afternoon. Actually, no, actually, I'm used to saying good evening, but being wrong about it. <clears throat> I've been doing it for a couple of years now. It's evening, and I want to say good afternoon. It's, it's kind of crazy. We're going to be looking this, this, I almost said this afternoon. We're going to be looking this evening at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to be playing a little bit of a game. I say playing a game, it's it's a game of what if. Uh, we all play it. What if this happens, or what if that happens, or what if, uh, listen, that, that, that can be a rabbit hole that we run down uh, that can truly just take up a lot of time and energy. But Paul played that game of what if. In 1 Corinthians 15, uh, there were a group of people in the church uh, that had begun to question or deny the fact that there was a resurrection of the dead. And uh, that they were influenced by the Sadducees who, who denied any of the supernatural events of, of, uh, that, that God had ever performed um, in, the, in the Bible. Um, and uh, that, that, that false belief carried over into Christianity at some, at some point. And uh, Paul was dealing with it here in 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to read, start reading in verse 12. So now Christ be preached that he rose from the dead. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. God, I thank you for, for uh, just the, the truth of the resurrection. Lord, it is the reason that we are here uh, today, Father, uh, not just because it's Easter, Lord, it's the reason, Lord, for that we come here every Sunday, Lord, to celebrate the, 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 the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to come to you with hearts of worship and love today. Father, we do have victory in Jesus. Lord, victory over sin because of the cross, victory over the grave, Lord, because of because his tomb is empty. Lord, what a what a blessing that is, Father, as we as we take the time to just stop and think about what it means for us. Uh, the, the resurrection is tied all throughout our faith. Lord, I, I pray that you would just bless this time, give us uh, give us uh, guidance, give me guidance, give me the words to speak, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would help us as we as we examine this thought: uh, What if Christ had not risen? Lord, I pray for your direction. I pray for your, your the moving of your Spirit. Lord, that you might strengthen and encourage us today. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Paul dealing with this this uh, uh, this uh, thing, it's not the first time that anybody has ever dealt with that. Thomas Jefferson and the old, uh, it was a man who struggled with, uh, a very intelligent man, a man who's one of our founding fathers here in the United States, but he was a man who struggled with the, the miracles that were performed in the Bible. Uh, uh, now, it, it doesn't believe, mean he did not believe in God. It does not mean that he wasn't a Christian at some point in time. But I know at the, at the very least that he struggled with those things. Uh, historically, you can, you can find that as you, as you, as you, as you study him. Uh, he's not the first person. There have been many others that struggled with those miracles because it, it, it's beyond our comprehension that, that, that some of these things happened, that, the, that the, they walked across on, on dry land. It, 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 it goes beyond our understanding. It would have had to have been a work of God, and that's what it comes down to. It wasn't just a wind blowing by. There have been people that tried to explain it by saying, uh, one of my favorite jokes is that it actually is something that was once taught, uh, that, that, that wasn't the Red Sea, but the Reed Sea, another nearby sea. It wasn't very deep and uh, the, the, the joke is uh, this, this Sunday school teacher is teaching that to her, her children uh, or to the kids in her class and, and said wow the one of the boys jumped and said wow what a miracle and she goes what do you mean I'm, it's not that big of a miracle they walked across in just a couple inches of water he goes not that part the part that, that God drowned Pharaoh and all of his armies in just a couple of inches of water wow what a miracle you know, it's, it, it, it's all how you look at it really but the, the, but the truth is that those things are supernatural it goes beyond our comprehension and our understanding of, of physical laws. It just doesn't make sense how Jesus Christ could take a, a couple of loaves and, 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 and uh, two loaves and, and, and five fish and, and, and break and feed 5,000 people. Just impossible to us. 
But the Bible is very clear to teach us that with God, nothing is impossible. And so, so there were those that doubted those miracles, and there were those that, would, that doubted that dead men could rise again. As a, as a paramedic, I, I, have, I have seen uh, many people that were in near-death uh, situations. I've, I've performed CPR on people, and we were able to get some of them back. Uh, it's not nearly the percentage that they show you on TV. If you're watching any of those hospital shows, it's like 80% of the people they do CPR on, they get a pulse back. That's a lie. That's not true at all. It's really about, at, at, the, at the best, maybe 1% or 2%, and most of those go on to just go ahead and die anyways. Uh, you get a, a heart rate back for a short period of time. Uh, it's, 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 it's not as much as you think. The best that we could ever do in medicine is postpone the inevitable. Even if, even if there were some, some miraculous saves that we had, and I say miraculous, I mean, it, just, it was only by God's grace that that person survived. Guess what? In the end, they're still going to die. It's only like postponing the, the inevitable. But God worked here a miracle in the, in, 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 his, in the Son, Jesus. Jesus worked those miracles of raising people from the dead, including Lazarus. And, uh, but but, but this, this miracle of, of his resurrection is, is the most of the utmost importance for us as Christians. Uh, it's, it's intertwined through our faith. Uh, the book of Romans says that, that our justification is by the resurrection. Uh, that, we, that, we, that because of his life that we now live. Listen, it, it's, it's part of our regeneration. It's part of our new birth. It's, it, it's all intertwined in the power of God. Paul said that, I, that he desired to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And it should be a desire all of us should have. And it, uh, our sanctification is a part of that cleansing power, sanctifying power of, uh, of, of God as he works in us, as he regenerates us, as he makes us. But just like Paul, we're going to play a little game called What If? What if Christ had not risen? What if Christ had not risen. And in fact, Paul goes down through here, and it's almost like a, a domino effect, but we're going to take these one at a time here. Verse says, uh, verse uh, 13 says, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, verse 14, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. If Christ be not risen, your, our preaching is vain, and your faith is is vain. Uh, uh, Paul's saying, if, if Christ hadn't risen, did not rise from the dead, we came to you and preached that he did. We came and preached to you that you could be saved uh, through the power uh, that, that, Christ, that brought Christ up from the grave, that he could regenerate you. And, and you have placed your faith in what we taught you. So if Christ didn't really rise from, the, rise from the dead, then what we told you was a bunch of, a bunch of lies. And what you believe is all fa fake and false. My first, my first note, or my first uh, point here is, is one: if the Christ is not risen, there is no reason to function as Christian as Christians, because it's all a lie. Everything that we do as children of God uh, that, that, that is a part of our faith would all be vanity, it'd all be worthless, it'd all be hopeless without purpose if Christ isn't, if Christ had not risen. We gather together every single Sunday to sing praise to God. To, we just sing victory in Jesus. Listen, if, if Christ had arisen, there would be no victory in Jesus. And we'd have no reason to sing praise to God or to lift him up. Philippians chapter 2 tells us that he humbled himself to, uh, even uh, under death of the cross. And that because of what he did, his name, that he now sits in the right hand of the Father, that his name is exalted higher than any other name. That one day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. But let's, guess what? If he didn't rise... There's no, they're not going to. They're not going to confess him King of Kings. They're not going to confess him Lord of Lords because he's still in the grave. We would have no reason to gather on Sundays to sing. Our, our singing would be empty. There would be no purpose, no no reason behind it. Now listen, the, the the tithe that's brought in to given to given unto God, there'd be no purpose for it. There'd be no purpose for a gathering or a building. We come together on Wednesday evenings to pray. My goodness, the prayer meeting is one of my favorite uh, favorite parts of uh, of, our, of our services here uh, in the week. And we get to 
spend time together praying with one another, bearing one another's burdens to the Lord and asking God to, to help us and, and all in the name of Jesus Christ. But if he's not risen, that time of prayer is a waste of breath. Those things that we hold dear are, are, are worthless. You serve, you serve the Lord in the church. Uh, whether it's playing a musical instrument, whether it's working in a ministry, being a Sunday school teacher, or anything else, you do that. Listen, you do it. You do it to serve the Lord because you know that one day you'll be rewarded. That's what the Word of God promises us. But if Christ is not risen, it's all wasted effort. There will be no reward. It'll all, when you die, that's the end. How, how sad is this game? Think about it. If Christ is risen, it's all a waste of time. Why are we even here? Let's just go eat, drink, and be merry. See, as Christians, our lives are to be about Christ. Our lives are to, 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 to be about following him. Our lives are to, 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 to be laid down so that we can then be obedient to what he would have us to do. But if he's not risen, then why are we all doing it? It's, it's, all, it's all false. I've heard many times, and I may have even said to myself at, at times, that, that listen, if, if I die and I find out that all this was a lie, it will have been worth it. No, it won't. It will not be worth it. To find that my life, everything I gave my life to was, 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 was fake. That wouldn't be worth it. Now, I'm not arguing that it is. Remember, we're playing what if. But if Christ had not risen, it's all. There's no reason for any of it. It becomes a religion like any other religion. It, 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 it becomes constituted of our traditions and, and the, the, the things that we teach, not based upon the power of God. See, that's what se- the, the resurrection is what separates us from all of those things. Christ had not risen, there would be no reason to function. Going on in, this, in the next verse, he says in verse 15, he says, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Paul continues on in this, this game. He says, listen, the, the, the preaching is all in vain. Christ had not risen, there would be no reason to function, but there would also be no reliable forerunners. See, Paul preached that Christ had been, Christ rose from the grave. Peter preached that Christ rose from the grave. John preached that Christ rose from the grave. Everybody in the New Testament preached that Christ rose from the grave. In fact, everybody in the Old Testament did too. Now, they didn't, they didn't say it as an after fact, but they projected it. In the book of Psalms, it's, it, 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 it's prophesied. In the book of Zechariah, it's prophesied. In the book of Isaiah, it's prophesied that, that, he would, that, that he would rise again from Genesis to Revelations. Every book, every book that, that was written uh, prophesies the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So here's the question. If we can't trust them in that, can we trust any of it? Can you trust somebody who lies to you? I mean, uh, about the big things. No. You certainly couldn't trust me. And I, if, if I was lying to you about, about uh, these, these foundational doctrines of, 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 of the Word of God, if Christ wasn't risen, then we can't trust any of, the, any of the, the, those prophets. We can't trust Moses and Abraham and David. We can't trust Isaiah. Listen, we can't trust any of them. And going down this rabbit trail, is, it's, like, it's like flicking that one domino and, and seeing how it affects everything else. It's because we're talking about a foundational truth of the Word of God, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's no reason to function. There's no reliable forerunners. Listen, if there is no resurrection of Christ, if Christ has not risen, there is no resurrection for the future. 
This is something that's promised and, and, and all throughout the New Testament, uh, most notably John chapter 3, 16. Everybody knows this verse. Uh, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How can I have everlasting life if there's no resurrection of the dead? I can't. But think about what that really means then. We go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse, uh, verses 18 through the end of the chapter, uh, looking at the promise of the, resur the, the resurrection of the dead. That with the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Therefore, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If we're to comfort ourselves with these words uh, and, and not be concerned because, uh, like others, who have no hope. We have hope. Why? Because of Christ's resurrection. But if Christ is risen, we don't have that hope. We don't have those promises. We, we, we have nothing of what, what, what God has promised to give us if we don't have the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Which that, what that means is when I die, I'm dead. This body will rot in the ground, and that'll be the end. There'll be darkness. Or, or, or even worse, I will spend eternity in hell away from God because, and, and with no ability to, to, to be near him or with him because there is no resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's no, there's no, res, there's no reason to function. No reliable forerunners. Look, look at me with the verses, verses here. It says, But the dead rise not, in verse 16, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and you are yet in your sins. And then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all men most miserable. Those who have died are gone, and there will never be any more fellowship once again. How miserable is that? there is no resurrection of Christ. Christ is not risen. I think this is the one that's the worst. There's no real forgiveness. We just read the verse. It says, your faith is in vain and you're getting your sins. If Christ isn't risen, you have not been forgiven. You and our sins are still born about in our bodies. The Bible says that Jesus Christ bore them on the cross and, and that he rose again. But listen, we're still, our faith is in vain and, and we're still sinners. We, we're still shackled and bound to sin that we cannot break. And we sing victory in Jesus. And there is no victory because he didn't rise from the dead. He didn't give us that victory if he's not risen. Looking back into my history and to who I was, uh, there's no real change in my life. I may have changed some outward things, but I'm still the same rotten, dirty sinner that I once was. If Christ isn't risen. And there's no hope. Of there ever being any change. If Christ isn't risen. It says if, we, if our hope is in Christ, we are, our, we are all, of all men most miserable. We live in a world without hope. People that are, uh, that, that, that are depending upon government, people that are depending upon uh, programs, people that are depending upon, uh, or, 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 or they're drowning in themselves in alcohol or, or overwhelming themselves in, in drugs. Uh, uh, their, their families are being torn apart, uh, children and women being abused, men, uh, men just letting the world and uh, the, 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 the addictions and just tear apart their lives. What do we say to them? Hey, you know, I heard of an AA meeting you could go to. Well, listen, AA, AA, AA meetings can, can help people sober up. I'm not trying to knock the different programs that are out there that, uh, that are trying to deal with those, those outward problems, but those outward problems are only symptoms of an inward disease called sin. And without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is no hope. We can't offer any. Uh, we can't offer any hope to anybody because uh, the, there is no answer to that problem. Jesus Christ was the answer. 
What if Christ hadn't been risen? Hadn't risen? Man, this is a depressing message. Except for it's not. Because we're basing it all on what if it didn't happen. But we know that it did. See, we know that, 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 we, that our faith isn't in vain, that we don't come here and worship in vain, because Christ did rise from the dead, and we have every reason to lift up his name and glorify him, because he is our Savior. He didn't just die and lay in that grave. He rose up three days later, just like he had been prophesied he would. That foundation, of, that foundation which we base our, our, our faith upon is, is proven through Scripture. In fact, there's more proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ than there is of, of most historical things. I was reading, a, I was reading today a, a message uh, that, that was preached by uh, Charles Spurgeon, and he, he mentioned a prominent atheist in the 1800s. His name was Gilbert. I think it's Gilbert West. I can get you the name later if you're interested. Uh, 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 he was a philosopher and a poet, and and was a prominent atheist. Everybody knew him uh, as 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 an atheist. He decided to, to put together a treatise pro disproving the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So he gathered all, whatever historical evidence there was, and, 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 and the documentation in Scripture and and elsewhere. And guess what happened? Before he was done, it went from a treatise to how it wasn't true, to he, he, he changed his mind, confessed himself to be a Christian, and he wrote the treaty on how it is true. He, he looked at the, the, the things that he had, and he came at it with the idea as a, of a lawyer, how a lawyer would use that, that evidence to prove a case. And in his heart and in his mind, it was proven to him. The same thing happened to Lee Strobel. If you've ever seen the, the movie or read the book, A, a Case for Christ, uh, a man whose wife became a Christian, and, and man, he hated the idea so much that he decided to try to disprove it. And he, he studied and worked. And in the end, what happened was he came to the understanding that it was true. Listen, we, we believe by faith the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but it doesn't mean that we have to be mindless and reasonless. There's enough evidence out there that we don't have to take it and just uh, a blind leap. And I'll tell you, if Christ rose from the dead, I'll believe him for everything else he says. He is risen, so there is reason to function. He is risen, so we can trust the word of God. Uh, listen, we know that we can trust the word of God because the word of God has proven itself to be true. In fact, uh, if you look back at the first couple of verses here in, in chapter 15, it says, uh, uh, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. He's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now he's going to declare that gospel to them. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, Notice this, this, this phrase, according to the scriptures. Now, hey, he wasn't taught this by some other man coming along. And when he says that he received it, it means he received it from Jesus Christ himself. And Galatians chapter 1, 12 tells us that, that those things that he was teaching them, Jesus Christ had revealed to him. But what he did was he, uh, Christ revealed to him, opened his eyes. Uh, when he looked at the Old Testament, remember who he was, Pharisee of the Pharisees. He knew the word of God. Uh, he didn't have to have somebody explain to him uh, uh, what Isaiah 53 was about. He knew that it was about the coming Messiah. But what God did was he opened up the blinders and he revealed to him that the, the, the Messiah that was spoken of in Isaiah 53 and Psalm chapter 22 and in all the other places in scripture, that, that was Jesus Christ. It was revealed to him. Exactly that. Psalms 22, we read it this morning. It's a beautiful picture of the res of the of, 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 of the, the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Except for guess what? The Jews don't crucify anybody. They didn't hang anybody on a tree. They stoned him to death. Do you know who hung people on the tree back in those days? Romans. Do you think David envisioned that, that, that Jerusalem would be occupied by the Romans one day and the Messiah? Is that what? Or did God give him those, those words to pen down, prophesying the truth of it before before he could ever have had any idea that that would come to pass. 
Isaiah 53, the, the stripes that were born upon his back. Again, Roman torture, Roman Roman customs. Uh, uh, by his stripes you were, he, you were healed. How did David know? Or how did Isaiah know? He didn't, other than what was revealed to him. And that was revealed later to Peter, to Paul. To Paul. He says, listen, uh, I taught you that this is what happened. That was the first part of the uh, of the... Of the uh, the gospel is, is his is his death, but not only his death, but also notice verse four, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, again also according to the scriptures. In Psalms, it's prophesied. In other places, it's prophesied that, that he was that he wouldn't just die, and that he wouldn't, that, that, but that he would also rise again the third day. You know what that does? It brings here's a big here's a big fifty dollar word. Veracity, truth to the Old Testament. The book of Isaiah, the book of Psalms were written generations and generations before Jesus was ever, ever walked on this earth. How did they know? How did all, how did all of those prophecies, I, last week I had a list of 44 different prophecies that were all fulfilled in the life and the death of Jesus Christ. How did they know? Holy men of God moved, they were moved by the Holy Spirit, he penned those words down. But it shows us what they had to say was true. So our, rely, our forerunners were reliable. There is a resurrection for the future because Christ is risen. The rest of the chapter of 1 Corinthians 15 is a treaty. Uh, it's an account of, of those things that are going to come to pass, how this natural body uh, will, will need to become a spiritual body, that that which is, is mortal will need to put on immortality, that that which is corruptible will have to become incorruptible. Hey, this, this changing of this body that I have right now, I can't wait to see what I'm going to have. It's going to be awesome. It won't hopefully be this shape. Hopefully it'll be thinner. And and maybe a little prettier. Uh, but hey, well, whatever God gives me, I'm going to be happy with because it's going to be a glorified body. And listen, wait, I, I'm, I'm 43 years old. I, I, I just had a birthday. I know I'm not that old, and most of you are, are a little older than I am, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but listen, as you get older, okay, you're all, except for my kids, you're all, uh, and, and James back there, you're all older than I am. But you understand, as you get older, you creak in places you didn't creak before. It, 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 things are, 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 are more harder to do, more harder. Speaking, apparently, is more harder to do. Uh, uh, <laughs> it gets harder to move around and bend, do different things as you get older uh, because our bodies are corruptible. I can't wait for the God to give me my new body. But that's what the rest of this, this verse is talking about. But that's not going to happen here on this earth. The Bible says it's going to happen in a moment. And it's making me have an eye. Gonna, we're going to be caught up in, into heaven and this body will suddenly not be this body anymore. What a day that will be. There is a resurrection. All those that have gone before us, uh, Pastor Williams died not too long, uh, two years ago, uh, I think yesterday. Uh, Stacy's been posting pictures and videos and, and my goodness, I miss him. We'll get to see him again someday. Our family members that have, that have gone on before us, our friends, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, funerals that we've attended. Listen, uh, they, they, they were just they were just a, a farewell parties because guess what? We're going to get to see him again. And while we grieve for the loss uh, that they're no longer here with us, we know that we're going to fellowship with them for an eternity in heaven. We're going to stand side by side and sing, "What a day that will be." There will be resurrection for the future because Christ is risen. And Christ being risen means that we really have forgiveness. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute sin. That's what David says. I am so glad that I am not who I used to be. I'm not perfect and I'm not, 
I, I, I know that God has a lot of work. I am so glad I'm not who I once was. I am so glad that God has worked in me and changed my heart and changed my mind and changed my direction. I'm so glad that, 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 that there's the that, that weight that he used to bear upon my shoulders and, and carry with me. I no longer have to bear anymore. That he carried it for me on the cross and it's done and it's finished. And it's all uh, because he died on the cross and rose again. I can praise him that I truly do have victory in Jesus. It's not just a song. It's not just an anthem. It's 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 the truth that we can hold on to. This we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different problems. But the gospel is powerful. Look at what Paul says here. Paul says here in First Corinthians fifteen. Go back. Go back up. Verse nine. After the verse nine says, "For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me." He says, "Listen, I'm not even worthy of being called an apostle. I was the one that was persecuting the saints, carrying that upon his shoulders. But by the grace of God, I am what I am." Listen, we can all cry the same thing. It's only by God's grace that we are what we are. But listen, we wouldn't be that if Christ had not risen. We'd still be caring about the, the sins upon this earth. Our feet would still be bound up in the muck and the mire of this world. We wouldn't have any chance of being free. Why? Because we weren't risen. He wasn't risen. But he is. And now we can have that victory. Now we can have that, that, we can have that future. Now we can have that hope. So we live in a world that's without hope. But we have the answer. I'm so glad that we have the answer. You know, people were excited. Uh, uh, so, well, let's rephrase it. Some people are excited about that vaccine. Other people aren't so excited about the vaccine. Let's not get caught up in that thought for a moment. But understand this. Uh, if, uh, if there was a disease, there was a medicine that you that, you're, that you had or your child, if you had a disease and your child had a disease and there was a medicine that could fix it and you didn't have access to it and somebody showed up with it, you'd be certainly excited, wouldn't you? That things like that have happened all throughout history. Uh, uh, how many of you guys know about the, 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 the sled dog race there in Alaska? Have you ever heard of the story? What's the name of that dog? There's a movie about it. Balto. You ever heard of the story of Balto? No. Back in Alaska, back in the in early, early 1800s, uh, uh, there was a, a, a city in Alaska, a town, and it was just ravaged by, I, I think it was scarlet fever. There was a medication that they needed, but they didn't have any doctors in town. They didn't have any way to get the medication there. Uh, they they would have uh, they would have uh, tried to get it there, except for the fact that this massive storm had rolled in, and they could not do anything about it. It was a dangerous trip, and Balto, who was the name of the dog, and uh, his owner uh, risked their lives in, in a, like a week-long trek to get the to get the medication. And man, they were excited when it got there. We have the answer. The world is looking for for in all the wrong places. They're, they're looking for their hope, and they're looking for the answer in the drugs. They're looking for it in the alcohol. They're looking for it in the things of this world. Listen, that's not the answer. They're, but they're looking. At least they're looking for something. We have the answer. I'm so glad that we do, so that we can tell others of the hope, of the reason, of the reason of the hope that's within us. It all falls back upon the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What if? I'm so glad we don't have to play this game. I'm glad it's just a game. The truth is, it should be a game that we all play once in a while. To cause us to question, what if? What if I'm not really saved? What if what, what if this, these things aren't true? Listen, I'm not saying that we, we should doubt the truth of Scripture, but to, get a, to give us a reason to dive into it, to study it out, and to, to verify it in our hearts. Because listen, there are times when Satan will try to, to, to cause doubts in your minds. There are, there are times when Satan will, will discourage you. And listen, the, the thing that will encourage you will be the truth of the Word of God and the promises of the Word of God and the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. If all we ever do is just, I believe it, there'll be times when we struggle. I learned this lesson uh, by talking to a friend of mine 
a long time ago, Dixon asked. We, 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 were, we were in Bible college together, saw a Christian young man. He's actually older than I was. That just that reminds me, he's an old man. But we were standing in the church after one of the services, and he was just, he was kind of standing there like he was thinking. I said, is, is everything okay? Is something bothering you? He said, so I've just really been pondering, you know, salvation by faith alone. I'm like, what? He goes, no, 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 don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying it's not true. I just, I've, re I've really been just pondering the truth of it because I don't want there to be a come, become a time when I, when I don't have a solid base upon it. It's good to go back and question some of those things and study them out for yourself instead of, well, I heard it once in a message a long time ago. Uh, that doesn't do you any good. It's only as good as your memory. But if you have the word of God and you have your foundation, notice their foundation is in the gospel. It says, moreover, brethren, verse 1, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Their foundation was the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's saying, listen, this gospel is, is the death of, of Jesus Christ for your sins and his resurrection. And if you get away from those two things, uh, you're in trouble. And we've got, a, we've got so many churches today, they're battling out over all kinds of things that, 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 that don't necessarily, are not important, but they are not as important as other things. And we need to be careful that we don't get caught up in those battles and we neglect this battle. This is the one where, uh, this is, there was this battle that Paul uh, had a great strife with those that came up, that came up and, and said, no, no, you need to add circumcision to this or add the law to this. And he was stood from the face so much that they decided to go back to Jerusalem and said, let's get the final word on this. And they all gathered together in Jerusalem in Acts chapter, I believe, chapter 15 and, and, and came to the conclusion that salvation by faith alone without the law. This should be our foundation. This should be the one thing that we're sure of, that we never move away from. This should be the one thing that, that we build upon our, 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 with our life, our holy faith, those things that we believe, the doctrines that we believe, all based upon the truth of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if we do that, I believe we'll stand sure. Peter says the same thing. He says to add to your faith virtue. And to your virtue, going on and on, the different things, the, the fruits of the Spirit, the, the, those things that, 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 that should be added to, to our faith. Why? Because if you do these things, you'll never move away from the faith. Paul says it another way, to work out your own salvation. May God help us to never move away from the resurrection. To never doubt the resurrection. There's so much. There's not just. It's not just blind faith. There's so much reason behind the resurrection. In fact, we see here. We'll, we'll end with this. But he he stated those facts and showed how they how they were backed up according to the scriptures, or mentions they were backed up according to the scriptures. Verse five. He substantiates these facts. He says that he was seen of Cephas. And then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of time. Somebody put together a list of times uh, that he was seen uh, that's recorded in Scripture. Uh, the one, that's, the couple that aren't recorded here, the times when the time when Mary saw him. Uh, the time when the two Marys saw him. Uh, there, there are multiple times. Listen, these are contradictions uh, that, that some will try to tell you that's a contradiction. Uh, it's just the different accounts are recorded for different purposes. Uh, but but the, 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 there are up to 12 different times, and there could have been more. The, the, but does there need to be more? Does every every time that he appeared to the apostles, the apostles and disciples, does that, did it need to be recorded? It sure would, it would have been nice. But isn't 12 enough? And how many times does he have to reveal to himself that uh, up to 500 people once, and Paul says, and many of them are still alive, although some sleep. You could, you could, you could write them right now and, they, and bring them to you, and they can substantiate the fact. Listen, these were men uh, that uh, had never seen him before that he could trick. Uh, he, he revealed himself with his, with the, the, to, to men who, who 
doubted that he would raise from the dead. Uh, but Thomas, uh, he, he, he proved himself with not just the, the look of his face, but the, the nail-pierced hands and the, the, sword, the, the, the spear through his sides. Put your fingers in, put your hands in, look to see who it is. He verified himself completely that he was the Christ. There should be no doubt. There should be no doubt. And God help us. God help us to stand upon the resurrection. I'm so thankful for it. May God help us. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the resurrection. Lord, without that resurrection, we would be in so much trouble. We'd be lost without hope. We would, uh, we would uh, be wasting our time. Lord, we would be struggling with uh, what to do now, Lord. But I am thankful uh, that we have hope in Christ. I'm thankful that we have proof of the resurrection. Lord, I'm thankful that, the, that, that there is a future uh, for us to look forward to as we serve, Lord, knowing that, that the, our service is not in vain, uh, Lord, but it's, uh, but it's looking to the coming day when we see you once again. Lord, may you help us uh, to continue to rest in the resurrection and in our faith in you. Lord, help us to, to serve you and to tell others about you, Father, uh, that we might see people saved. Lord, I pray that you give us boldness and direction throughout this week. Lord, may we be yielded to your Holy Spirit. Lord, even now, I pray that uh, as your Spirit works, Lord, may you encourage us, may you strengthen us, Lord. Lord, if need be, may you convict us. Lord, you know our hearts. I pray that you, that you would have your way with us. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.